Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Run Hartung and for this video we're going to look at the anatomy of this ear model. One thing I'll point out right away, this is one model that I have that actually has the bony parts that surround the ear represented. This is actually the temporal bone and I'm going to move this model and bring in a skull to show you exactly where this is. This is one of our human skulls and I'll take off the skull cap so you see the basement of the skull cavity and I want you to notice over on this side we have an intact temporal bone, the vestibulocochlear nerve, cranial nerve number eight, comes out of the area of the ear here, comes out of this part of the temporal bone. Notice on the other side this particular skull has been dissected using a Dremel tool. One year one of my students brought in a Dremel tool for us to do that. Thanks again Miss Romeo. Um, so we cut off these parts of the temporal bone and what you can see in here is the cochlea or at least the bony part of the cochlea right down here. Can you see that little, almost looks like a seashell? That's the cochlea or cochlea depending on how you want to pronounce it. This region is where cranial nerve number eight would come out and if I put the pointer in right here the external auditory meatus, you can actually see that pointer inside there. Maybe it's better if I use the colored one. Comes in right in there where the tympanic membrane would be. And the last thing I'll point out on the skull, I don't know if you'll be able to see it really well, but if you see these two little bit larger holes on this side, those are actually semicircular canals going in and coming out. The other thing I could point out on this temporal bone is there are little sinuses in here in the temporal bone. Let's go back to the ear model. And I'm going to set it upright like this and we'll take off the bones. And now we can see the structures inside of the ear. We'll start with the external ear. This is the pinna or the oracle. It's the part that we make holes in to put jewelry on. External auditory meatus is the hole going in. External auditory canal is here. And this is where earwax is made. The external ear ends at this structure, which is called the tympanic membrane. And in order to show you the particular parts on this part of the model, I'm going to remove the tympanic membrane. This is the tympanic membrane. And if I flip this model over, this part of the model over, you can see two of the ossicles of the ear or the ear bones. This one is called the malus, and this one is called the stapes. Excuse me, this one's called the malus, and this one's called the incus. The stapes is over there attached to the cochlea. There's also a muscle here, that's what this is representing, and I don't remember the specific name of it, but the, I, I do remember the physiology. If you hear a really loud sound, then this muscle contracts to try and decrease vibrations so that those those louder vibrations don't damage your hearing apparatus. I'm going to put the tympanic membrane back into the model. And if I can turn the model so that you can see it, I'll just show it to you where it is in place. Tympanic membrane again here, malus, incus, and the incus lines up with the stapes. Those three ossicles, their job is to transfer vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the oval window, which is underneath the stapes here. The oval window is part of the cochlea, and this part back here is the cochlea. 
The cochlea is the shell-looking structure that comes up and connects to the vestibule, which is this region here. The vestibule, all, the vestibule of course, also has connected to it the semicircular canals, which are important for equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium. Let's take out the cochlea and its structures and look at its parts. So this is the cochlea. It comes up here and connects to the vestibule. This is the stapes. And underneath the stapes is the oval window. Again, this is the vestibule. If I turn the vestibule over, and again, here's the cochlea. It comes all the way down here. See that little roundish area there? This is the round window. So we get oval, oval window under the stapes and then round window over here. The vibrations that come in travel through um, these compartments and the vibrations start in one compartment up here and then they're able to come out the bottom compartment and leave through the round window inside and I'll show you this part because um, it'll help you with the histology a little bit this is cranial nerve number eight the vestibulocochlear nerve this part is the vestibular nerve this part is the cochlear nerve because it comes from the cochlea and this part is supposed to connect to the vestibule in the middle of the cochlea this is also cochlear nerve and you'll see that under the microscope doing the histology. So that's the parts of the removable cochlea and vestibule conglomeration. Um, another part that is on the larger model is the auditory tube or a station tube. And for my students, you can call it auditory tube, you can call it a station tube, take your pick. Um, this tube goes down and connects to your throat, and it allows for the air pressure in the middle ear to be equalized with the outside air. You need this air separated from the outside air so that you can hear properly. So most of the time, the station tube is closed so that the vibrations are able to move the tympanic membrane. If you open the cestation tube, your hearing diminishes because the vibrations happen on both sides of the um, tympanic membrane, and that causes the vibration to be less on the tympanic membrane. So you need the station tube to be closed for good hearing. But every once in a while, you open up your mouth, and the station tube opens, and it lets the pressure equalize in here so you don't have vast pressure differences between the inside and the outside. If you get big pressure differences between the middle ear and the, and, and the external auditory canal, then you can rupture the eardrum. I think those are all of the structures of the ear model. So please look at it and study. If you have any questions, again, as always, feel free to contact me. And thank you once again for watching.